Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about asking for help. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a new software engineer in a team, should you try to do everything within your control to understand something before reaching out for help? Yes and no. So this is a challenge that I struggle with quite a bit. Uh, I didn't have this problem when I was a junior software developer because I didn't really... I mean, I looked up and respected my coworkers quite a bit. The seniors were like, you know, ev they knew everything. And so, and they were very nice, my seniors. I was very lucky uh, when I got to do real software development. Uh, because I could ask them a lot of questions and things like that, which I thought was very nice. And then I basically got into this pattern where I tried my best to do things by myself, but in many cases I didn't know so well what to do. So I asked for help and then they helped me as best as they could. And we kind of got this organic rapport with people. And from there we started trusting each other a little bit more and then they told me that yeah you mean it's always nice to talk to you and like so it's not a bother to 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 help you or that's what I was told right and I think that that is the key to answering your question do people enjoy helping you because it's a balancing act you see if you ask for help all the time and you never try to get anything yourself, you don't do any, you don't make an attempt. And if the person is helping you is like able to, uh, to, to, when it's very clear that you're not putting in the work to that person, it might get really annoying, especially if you do this all the time. And so, if you can find that sweet spot between asking for help all the time and sitting for too long because that is a different type of thing some this is the thing i struggle with these days when i have software when i uh, lead software teams and things like that well i'm not i'm not always leading the software team but uh, in this instance uh, let's uh, let's talk about that where as a team like a team leader or an architect or whatever you're doing right it's really important for you to create an environment where people are not afraid to ask for help because that is a very different thing. If you are afraid to ask for help, that's actually a very damaging thing. And I've had many, many, many problems with this. And this guy's this is not just juniors. I've worked with uh, people who have 10 years of experience who can't solve a problem, but they will not ask for help when faced with this issue. And the thing is that the, this is an ego. One part of this can be fear and another thing can be ego. But it's sort of like a... Uh, you know, it's sort of like uh, a football team where there's one player who is either afraid to fuck up or like is a ball hog or whatever, right? They won't actually pass the ball. What the problem with that is that now you're betting everything on that that individual is so good that you can win the game. But if that idiot would just pass the ball, the odds of people being able to help and like actually the team as a unit will be stronger for it. And that is a challenge sometimes with some people because they they think in a very individualistic way, which is not a bad idea like, because you're definitely going to be an individual within the group. But you have to find that balance between trusting other people and protecting yourself. And that is... Uh, it's a tough thing for a lot of people to do because many people don't want to take risks with their career or like say the wrong thing etc etc and I am a firm believer in that the only way to actually survive in a healthy way and so as, as a <laughs> in whatever you do is to get to a point in your life where you take you can always take a calculated risk because you don't, uh, you you're not you're not gonna necessarily do something stupid, but you cannot know the future. In some cases, you sort of have to just roll the dice and move forward. And it's much easier to roll the dice and take a risk if you know that you sort of know the possible outcomes and you have everything in place so that if something does go bad, well, you can always save the situation afterwards. Because as even here in software development, we say the same thing, right? It's not possible. You mean things are gonna break? 
it's not a matter of if it is when are your is your system going to break or like when is something uh, going to have a bug or something like that and so be able being able to recover from that state is a better strategy than try to design a system that never fails because it's basically impossible. Same thing for you. You are going to be stumped. You are going to sit, find situations where you have to ask another human being for help. And so cultivating the necessary skills and the necessary emotional intelligence and personal security to be able to do that is a very healthy thing. And that's where that balance comes in. where. Reaching out for help. I mean, guys, I'll tell you some a secret. Sometimes I, as a so, when I lead a team, I play dumber than I am. Like, well, I'm, I might depends on how dumb you think I am. But uh, I hope you understand me when I say that sometimes I ask questions that I know the answer to, so that someone else can answer it to me. And that is not to manipulate people. It is to show that especially when I have juniors where some of the juniors that I've worked with they they start getting this idea and I've seen this many times before where they they get this sense that because I am the tech lead or if something like that then I am unfailable like I'm infallible I don't make mistakes or you know saying something correcting Frederick is like a paramount to treason and that means that oh shit now my head is on the shopping block no uh, I want them to understand that uh, as I like to say to my people, and this is of course always, n it never works, but it is true. I'm not your boss. In this scenario, I'm not their boss. I cannot be a dictator, or it's, as I say, it's not my team. I am the tech lead of this team. I have certain responsibilities and I show them, I give them exactly what my responsibilities are. My responsibility is one like these sorts of things. I need to have to uh, be in meetings. I need to have like an idea of what we're gonna do, and I need to have like a, a fairly good understanding of all of you guys, sort of how everything's going, etc., etc. But I cannot be the only person who has a wor you know has an opinion on how we do work, because the reality is that then you put me in this position where the only thing that makes this team work is that I'm in the office. And that's not going to work. You need to be able to ask, you know, to take some personal responsibility, take on some own, some of your own decision-making uh, challenges. And this is this this sucks for you because the the reality is that if you cannot, if I cannot trust that you can that you will solve a problem without me being there and not asking for help from one of your coworkers or asking for help from a third like if from an external party if it's another team that we're dealing with well then the work is not going to continue and i'm going to have to get rid of you anyway because you're not going to be able to progress because that is what matters it's it, the, 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 that balance between that you have the skills to do things that are reasonable for an individual but that doesn't mean that you, you, you just sit there and do nothing until you can fix it because if you can't fix it in a reasonable amount of time you're actually blocking the entire sit the, the, the situation in a different way right so that is as I said it's sort of like playing football we can't have one player who thinks that it's all down to that person and we can't have someone who can't keep up with the rest of the team so that's why it's so important to be able to do both because as I was saying for me as a team lead you can't have one person who like where you and a lot of people do this and it's super cowardly and I, I really dislike it I understand it at the same time but they will just say no I oh, Frederick isn't there or like the team they oh yeah no we can't do any do anything because we have to ask that person for permission to do this and I kind of go no you don't you're a software developer I expect you to be able to figure out how it goes and then if I'm not there I should be able to trust that you can f sort of figure out or ask for help from somebody else and see if you can make this work and then when I come back then maybe I didn't like what you did and that's okay because I understand that you had to make a decision made a decision uh, you had to do something to get yourself unblocked and then maybe we, re re we rewrite the code or something like that but you still have to move forward I hope that that makes sense to you so what I want you to take away from this is that uh, you should absolutely try your best to figure something out but it's always a balancing act when you ask for help as a person in a new software team in the beginning you should be very aware of that it's more okay to ask for a lot of help in the in the start of things uh, because 
when you're new, you're so you. Uh, it's good to think in terms of you have like an onboarding period where people sort of expect you to not know things. So make sure that you're leveraging your coworkers in that in in at that time because it's very good for you to like get a lot of the information you need to be autonomous early on. Because the further in you get, if you don't ask a lot of questions and you don't really know how to do things, the more the more embarrassing, if that makes sense, it will become. Uh, so. In the beginning, you're sort of allowed to be, you know, green and not really know things. So leverage that time, use it to your benefit, and then remember that there's a balancing act between trying to solve every problem yourself and then like never asking for help and asking for help all the time. Think of yourself as a football player or a, like a team sport type of thing, right? Where the goal is for you to help the team win the game. You have to, as an individual, take responsibility that you have the right, you know, that, that you're doing your best and so forth. You, but you also need to pass the ball or like be able to actually cooperate with other people because the goal is not for you to solve every problem by yourself. And it's the goal, and you, we cannot have one person who gets carried by the entire team. The goal is for us to all fit into this environment and work effectively to solve problems or win the game. That is the goal. Have a great day.